Howdy folks, today I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to install a super simple solar panel setup like this one from Renergy. First up then, we want to give the roof a good clean and degreasing to allow good contact between the adhesive and the roof itself. We can now go ahead and unbox our panel. I've chosen a 100 watt semi-flexible panel made by Renergy. The reason being is due to its low profile, its lightweight, and also its ability to easily conform to the contour of the van's roof. I'm now going to measure and mark where the adhesive bars need to be applied to the panel. Panels such as this need good airflow to prevent them from overheating. To do this, I'm going to account for a gap to allow for that airflow. So I'm going to measure across the width every 20 to 30 centimeters, and then again, I'm going to measure across the sides, but allow for a five centimeter gap across every bar. To adhere the panel, we're using Sikaflex, designed specifically for automotive use. It has superior strength, can deal with the ongoing vibrations of a van, and is also UV resistant. Using our marks from earlier, we can apply a bead that's around five millimeters thick. Once done, you can go ahead and place the solar panel on the roof in your desired position. Apply a little pressure all the way around without being over excessive. We then want to go ahead and apply some adhesive on the windward side of the panel. This is to give it a little extra protection and I've used some painter's tape to give it a nice clean finish. Next we need to run our cables through and for this you can buy purpose-built cable entry housing. We're going to be using the roof rack to give a slightly stealthier look and I'm going to install some of these cable entry bolts instead. If the weather's holding up, you can go ahead and drill a hole into the roof that's large enough to fit two solar panel cables through. You can then go ahead and apply some red oxide around this newly cut edge to prevent it from rusting later down the line. I also installed a rubber grommet and this is to prevent the cables from chafing and later grounding out. We can then go ahead and run our cabling through, one positive and one negative. For a 100 watt panel like this, we we'll need to use 2mm squared or 14 AWG size cabling as a minimum. You can now go ahead and adhere your cable entry housing in place and tighten down the bolts to ensure a nice waterproof seal. Solar panels use what are known as MC4 connectors. As well as these, we'll also need to go ahead and install an inline fuse just like this one. The MC4 connectors come with a few different parts. Here, for example, we have a female connector which uses the smaller pin and goes on the positive cable. The male connector uses the larger pin and will be installed on the negative cable. Go ahead and strip your wires back and then use a crimping tool to then crimp them onto the relevant wire. The MC4 connector can then be disassembled, placed onto the wire and reassembled as shown. As the MC4 connectors are already provided on the solar panel, we only need to perform this task once to the cables that we place through the cable entry housing. For this 100 watt panel, we need a 10 amp inline fuse. If your panel differs, you'll need to take the amperage, times it by 1.25 and then round this number up to the nearest size fuse. We can now take the positive cable from our solar panel, which usually has the male connector, clip it into the inline fuse, and then connect that to the positive cable coming from the cable entry housing. We'll do the same with the negative cable, which normally has the female connector, and connect this to our other cable. To finish it off, we use some cable mounts, cable ties, and some adhesive to hold the wiring in place. A little later down the line then, we'll come to our final fix of the electrics and we can connect the panel to the leisure battery. I'm going to start here with this temperature gauge. Simply take a mount and a cable tie, apply it to the side of the battery, and then you can go ahead and cable tie your temperature gauge in place. Next 
Next up, we'll want to install a positive and negative cable onto the lugs of our leisure battery. This will later be connected to our solar charge controller, which will manage the amount of electricity coming from the panel down to the battery. I'm going to use a Renogy Rover 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller for this installation. You could use a 10 amp controller. To find the size you need, take the wattage of your solar panel, divide it by 12 and buy the next size up. I chose this size as MPPT charge controllers are more efficient than PWM and this was the smallest size available. I can now go ahead and install the mounts simply by screwing them in place. Now you can go ahead and find a spot that works for you to mount the controller. I like to find somewhere that's fairly accessible so that I can view the display and the buttons. Before we go ahead and insert any cables, it's very important that we cover the panel, as this will be giving out electricity as long as there is daylight outside. At the bottom of the controller are the terminals for the cabling. On the left is for the solar panel, in the middle is from the leisure battery and on the right is for the optional load. On the far left, we've got an insert for the temperature gauge. Now it's very important that we insert the cabling from the leisure battery first. We're going to take the positive cable from the leisure battery and install that, followed by the negative cable. We can then go ahead and install the cabling from the solar panel. I've chosen not to use the optional load in this installation, but I will insert the temperature gauge. You should hopefully now be able to see some life coming through your solar charge controller. This means that the installation is complete and you're ready to camp off grid. I hope this video was helpful to some of you. I'll leave a link in the description for all the items that I use, but I hope to see you on another video soon and happy travels.